Hey guys, it's Denise from LumaHead.com. For this project, we're going to learn how to make the flag stitch square. This video is for one square of a larger pattern, so stay tuned for the blanket pattern where we'll put all of these squares together. And for your supplies, you're going to need any loom. I'm using a 24 loom hook, 80 yards of yarn, two stitch markers, and for some of us, a little coffee. Let's begin. We're going to be knitting with two strands of yarn. Secure the end to the anchor peg if you have one or the base of the loom. And then take your working yarn and you're going to wrap every peg. If you're using chunky yarn, then you won't have to use two strands. You'll only use one. You're knitting flat, so turn directions and you're going to start knitting using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. So just half wrap your peg and knit off. Continue the process around the whole loom till you're back at peg one. Now at some point the project will seem simple and repetitious, but stay with me until the end because I'm gonna show you some tricks on how to stay on track because there are points where it can get a bit confusing. We're going to start with row one and keep in mind that all your odd rows are going to be a complete row of the knit stitch. You can use any version of the knit stitch. For this particular square, we're going to use the E-wrap version. To do the E-wrap, you completely wrap all of your pegs all the way to the end. And when you're done with that, you take your hook and you're going to knit off. The E-wrap is going to give you a larger looser stitch stitch and so your fabric will be larger but your stitches will not be as detailed as when you use the U-wrap version that we used for the cast on. When you're done with the knit off you return to that last peg, peg 24 and we're going to do row 2 where we're always going to slip or in other words skip the first stitch. This peg right here. For row 2 we're going to purl 22 pegs and if you've never done the purl stitch then let me explain that for you. You take your working yarn and you put it under the loop and take your hook scoop up that working yarn to create a new loop take the old loop off and take that new loop put it on and tighten. Put the working yarn under scoop it up to create a new one take the old loop off put the new We'll loop on and tighten. Keep going around the loom until you've done 22 pegs. When you're done with those 22 purl stitches, you'll be back at peg one and peg one you will do a knit stitch. You're always going to do a knit stitch when you're back at that peg. So now we're ready to go to three and as I explained, all odd rows are knit stitch rows. We've turned around and so as always when we start the row, we're going to skip the first stitch and then start with the E-wrap which of course we wrap every peg again and knit off. After a few rows, remove the knot. This is a flat project, so again, you're going to turn around and head back towards the working yarn on the last peg, which we're going to slip. Now we're heading to row 4 where things get a bit interesting and we're going to purl 20, knit 1, purl 1, knit 1, and I'm going to show you a little trick. Alright, what's really cool about this particular project is that you don't have to count rows and you don't have to remember um, where you left off. Hopefully you've used stitch markers and they will tell you what to do next. My butterfly stitch marker right here means I'm going to purl. Next to it I'm going to start my knit. 
So I get a removable stitch marker and I place it on that first knit stitch. These two stitch markers right here and here are vital. So they tell me what to do. The removable one tells me where I start my knit stitches which in this case that's my first one that I'm going to knit and then I'm going to follow that by uh, this yellow one that always tells me it is a purl stitch. I need a purl stitch right there in order to reduce my curling and then I'm going to come here and peg number one is always going to be a knit stitch. Now row five is an odd number row and as always I said odd numbers you have to uh, just knit the whole row but you don't even need to remember that you're going from left to right so anytime you're going from left to right you're on an odd row and you're just going to knit the whole row. You don't need to count and you don't need to worry about it. When you're going from right to left you're on an even and you're always going to start with the purl stitch and you're always reducing the purl stitch by one and increasing your knit stitch by one. The two stitches that follow never change. It's a purl one knit one. So you don't need to remember those two. Let's look at row six. We're gonna purl 19 and we already know how to do the purl. So we're gonna keep going all the way until we get to the stitch right before that removable um, stitch marker and before we start the knit stitch take your marker and move it over one and on row six now we have two knit stitches so we do those two e-wrap knit stitches knit off and like I said now we're going to move on to the next two which are always the same so we're going to purl that one with the little butterfly marker and move on which is peg two we're going to move to the next one which is peg one and that one's always the same and we're going to knit off I don't have to remember what row I'm on all I know is I'm going to skip the first peg and then I'm going from um, left to right so I'm going to knit to the end I'm going to turn around and go back to that last peg which was peg 22 and I'm going to skip that first peg and start with a purl stitch and I'm going to purl all the way back uh, until I'm um, one peg from the one that has the removable stitch marker. I take off the stitch marker and I move it one peg down which is now going to increase the number of knit stitches that I have and I'm going to knit those stitches which in this case I can see that it's three knit stitches and I don't have to remember what row I'm on so I'm gonna wrap them I'm going to knit off those three stitches the peg with the butterfly stitch right here I'm always going to purl because that's my peg two and that's a constant and when I'm finished with that one purl stitch, I know that my next one is always a knit stitch. It's peg one, and it's the end of that stitch row. And I'm ready to go for my next row, which I don't have to worry about what row it is. I know what direction I'm knitting, and so I'm just going to knit a whole row of the E-wrap knit stitch. Or if you chose to use the U-wrap, then in your particular case, it's a U-wrap knit stitch or a true or a flat, whatever knit version of the knit stitch you decided to use. All right, so you're gonna continue to knit the odd rows and on the evens, continue to reduce the purls by one and increase the knits by one. And on the last row, um, you're gonna knit completely. Then in order to reduce curling, we're gonna purl the whole last row. And uh, you're gonna see that right here where the two last pearls and uh, the you're gonna slip that first knit stitch and we're gonna start purling our way back to the beginning and uh, you no longer need the little stitch marker so we can remove it then just purl all your stitches until that uh, second to last right because we remember that 
um, you purl up to that stitch marker right here and that the very last stitch is always we are going to knit so now you could if you wanted to just start another square by just continuing from the very beginning or you can bind off and in this case we're going to do a modified basic bind off the basic bind off you wrap peg two and knit off and then take that loop from peg two you move it over to peg one and you knit off and you take that loop from peg one and you move it to peg two to modify you wrap peg one and peg two and knit off and you do this as your second one right you're going to remove the loop from peg two, put it on peg one, knit off, and then you're going to move that loop from peg one to peg two. And what this does is it, it keeps uh, the bind off from being so tight. And then um, you're going to go back to the basic, which is wrap two, move it to peg one, knit, you know, knit off. And then take that loop from one and move it to peg two. And you're going to keep repeating the basic. You wrap peg two, knit off, move that loop from peg two to peg one, knit off, and move the loop from one to two. And as you see, the, the pegs are, are decreasing. And you're going to continue and modify on the middle and modify on the second to last. And remember when you're modifying, you're wrapping peg one and peg two and you knit off. And if you have any questions, you can ask me at the bottom. And I do have a video only for this particular technique for the modified basic bind off. And I will put the link in the description. Right, so you remember that you're doing this in the uh, second, in the middle, and in the second to last where you modify. And at the end, you're just doing a basic bind off where you wrap peg two, move it to uh, peg one, knit off, and this is the last one. So in this case, um, you don't need to move it. It doesn't need to go anywhere. It's the last loop. All you're going to do is you're going to take your scissors, cut the yarn, and then pull it. Uh, forward or outward however you want to say it and you're done to finish off your square all you need to do is stretch your stitches to get rid of that little bit of curl all you have to do is block your square all right folks remember to comment like and if you haven't already done so subscribe so you can come back and loom with me